Hi, hello. Um, I made it for seven o'clock or ten past. Um, so I have been asked a question. So I'm going to answer that question now. Um, thank you very much, Rebecca, for asking me that question. The question is, do I do Botox? The answer is no. Um, so, um, sorry about that, uh, Rebecca. I am a plastic surgeon, but I, I, um, I don't do Botox or any other non-surgical non treatments at the moment. I'm really, um, I specialise in breast and body contouring, so I specialise in surgery. Um, we do have someone at the clinic who does Botox, um, but I don't do it myself. Um, I think one of the well, one of the problems, in a in a way, I think, is a lot of people do tend to um, generalise, and I think you'll find a lot of doctors will, a lot of plastic surgeons will do everything. They'll do rhinoplasties and boob jobs and buttock implants and. Uh, facelifts, Botox, fillers, laser, dermabrasion. So um, I tend to niche it and I just, for the last probably 10 years or so, I've pretty much only done breast, did breast reconstruction in the NHS and I now do breast uh, in the private sector. I do do some body contouring, so I do tummy tucks, liposuction um, and I do a bit of moles and skin lesions, but I, I pr pretty much focus on uh, cosmetic breast surgery. I don't do any aesthetic facial work uh, like Botox or um, fillers. And um, I leave that to people who do the aesthetic facial work, uh, who specialise in that. So, yeah, that's my, that's my question. There it is. Um, so <laughs> if you've got any questions and you want to answer them, please go ahead. But one thing I would talk, think was going to talk about was something that I saw uh, today not today, yesterday, I think it was, um, a patient is, I think she's actually suing her surgeon uh, for a botched, uh, inverted comma, boob job, because, and, and the surgeon took nine minutes to do the surgery. This is what the article said. I don't know, she's obviously somehow got hold of the theatre records, because we log the time of time into theatre, time out of theatre, and the time into theatre was, you know, something like... Um, 12.08 and the time out of theatre was nine minutes after that so um, so I just want to talk a bit about that um, the when you're surgery when you're training in surgery I was taught that it is good to be quick and I think I think that is true and I do tell other surgeons that it is good to be quick but uh, there are fast surgeons and there are slow surgeons and there are good surgeons and there are bad surgeons and those two groups aren't necessarily um, equal. So fast doesn't equal, does that make sense? <laughs> fast doesn't mean good and slow doesn't mean bad, basically is what I'm saying. Um, but um, certainly at least when you're training, you've got to be, you can't be really slow, otherwise people won't give you things to do. So you've got to be a, a certain level um, and you've got to be efficient. I've worked with some very... Um, some brilliant surgeons and I did my fellowship in New Zealand with uh, Sweet Han and he did operating lists which were huge and they looked like it was a week's work and it was in a day and he'd get through that in the day and he was a very well I wouldn't say he's a very quick surgeon he got through things very quickly because he was very efficient and it's about being efficient and maximising the time um uh, between doing stuff, and that, that's what I teach people to do. I think you've got to be quick and efficient, but you've got to you've got to take time over the bits that are important. So if a stitch isn't right, you've got to take it out and do it again. And if something's not right, you've got to do it again. You have no problem doing it again. So you mustn't really be looking at the clock and trying to be quick. And I've never heard of anything like a nine minute boob job. Um, and it may, led me to think um, one thing. That, Certainly, as plastic surgeons, I don't know about other surgeons, but we often worry about being sued. Um, and some people are very defensive, and I think we we we're all um, would serve ourselves well to be um, aware of uh, of uh, the possibility of litigation. It's not quite as much as it used to be, um, or it's not quite as bad, bad as I think as I, I understand it is in America. But it's certainly something that 
uh, we are aware of. And I've always had the impression of sort of lawyers being all oh, the enemy and, oh dear, you know, they're just, you know, looking for to, to try and um, uh, blame you for something and it's all about money and things. But I must say I've changed my view a bit when I heard that. I mean, if uh, someone is doing a breast augmentation in nine minutes, they're not, not really... Um, paying attention to it and they're not giving it it's, it, it's uh, the necessary um, care and time that it needs so it makes you think well maybe there is well not maybe clearly there is a need for someone to stand up for people who have been wronged and uh, and I think um, I, th um, I mentioned this yesterday in theatre uh, and there was a rep there because obviously as a surgeon, I know other surgeons, but I don't know what they're like in theatre. I might pop in and say hello, but I don't know, you know what other surgeons are like in theatre. But the reps often um, know what lots of surgeons are like. And I mentioned this to a rep, um, and he said, oh, yeah, there's a surgeon who's known for doing, his record is 17 minutes for, for a breast augmentation. I thought, record? You know, <laughs> the concept of having a record for doing... Um, an operation is just absurd and uh, obviously there are people out there who feel that it is a a good thing to um to to be very quick at these operations i don't particularly think it's a good thing and as i say i like to think i'm a quick surgeon um but it takes me about an hour to an hour and a half to do a breast augmentation um so um but but uh, but I, on average i don't really I don't really time myself. I don't really look at the clock, but um, but I think clearly there is a need for people to be protected by um, from from surgeons who aren't giving due care and attention. And it goes back to what I um, always say and talk about: is like look look for the training. the The other thing is one of the things that uh, certainly in my practice is I think one of the um, thank you one of the um, important things which I now talk to people about is that it's important to set goals and uh, if you set a goal then you know when you've achieved the goal and certainly my personal goals have changed over the last few years and um, and I know people who do operating lists with like nine breast augmentations on it um, but that's never to be honest that's never been me and I don't want that to be me I don't want to do a list with nine breast augmentations on not least because I probably forget what I'm supposed to be doing there's often some little nuances like I might move an inframammary fold or I might want to enhance the cleavage more or do you know make sure I put the implants in don't put them too high don't put them too low whatever or do something specifically for a patient and uh, I'm sure I couldn't keep track with, with such a long list. So it's never really been what, I've, what I'm about. And I'm very happy just doing um, a couple of cases on, on, on a list. Um, so, um, so, yeah, um, research your surgeon. I think that's, uh, that's terrible. Um, a nine-minute boob job is, uh, um, not, is, is unacceptable. And um, I feel very sorry for that patient who clearly paid a lot of money for it um, and um, she's quite right to be upset and to be complaining about it um, so yeah so I thought, I thought I'd, um, to that that's my um, that's my my um, all's worth um, Mary oh it's I, I just don't feel hopefully after today I'm going to start feeling Christmassy because I know it's Christmas soon isn't it so um, next week is is it a bank holiday? I don't know. I probably won't do one next week. Can I just say I won't do one next week? I'm just going to say I don't, I'm not going to do one next week. I'll pick up the week after, which is probably, yeah, it's definitely going to be New Year, isn't it? So I do um, be here Tuesday night, 7 o'clock in the New Year, whenever that is, the Tuesday of the New Year. First is New Year's Day. Second, New Year's Day's, is it second or third? Third? Anyway, whatever it is, I'll, um, I'll pick this up. Any questions, please, um, please ask them. And if you do ask them, it'll save me rambling about random news articles. <laughs> but um, I'm always happy to ramble about random news articles if I don't get any questions. Um, I don't know if the lighting is like, it looks like I've got an overhead, but um, I've got a head. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to say Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, Happy New Year, because I won't see you before then. And um, if you have any Christmas 
or otherwise questions, preferably with a plastic surgery bent, um, because that is my specialty. Um, please ask away, put them on Facebook, email Laura, or, you know, phone us or whatever, and I'll be very happy to go over that in the new year, second or third or whatever it is, the, second, the first Tuesday of the new year, and um, I will catch you then, and if um, I hope you have a lovely a lovely Christmas and uh, I'll see you in 2017. I'm going to check out, checking out.